Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Marley and I decided to do a little bit of backpacking. It's been a while, um, to be specific, probably about 15 years since I've done anything like this. I used to do this a lot when I was younger, you know, 13, 14 years old. Um, we had a big property and I used to head out on the weekends and uh, set up camps like this and do hunting and, and some fishing and we had a really good time. And so it'd been a while. I figured I'd bring you guys with us. Um, my total pack weight, I think, was like right around 32 pounds, and that's with all my camera gear and whatnot. I haven't done this in a while. I just set up a 10 by 15 tarp, which is really lightweight to carry. I've got my uh, shooting sticks that I pulled up as the, uh, the pole out front here, and then I've got the guy outs here diagonally so we're able to have a fire tonight out in front because it is going to get cold it's about 41 degrees right now and it'll probably get down to around 19 20 at the coldest tonight so this is my pack set up you guys might have seen my uh, video a couple weeks ago that I did talking about backpacks and bags and that sort of thing um, so I, I set this up I think it's like 80 something liters holds maybe a little more than that. Um, I got a sleep system for Marley. I've got a sleep system for myself. Um, yes, Marley does have her own sleeping bag. <laughs> and uh, I got my camera gear, a shovel, um, all my cooking stuff, coffee stuff. Um, so when you really think about it, everything that I brought, this really isn't that much. Um, I could probably even pack lighter um, but the majority of it is most of my camera gear, like batteries and some lights and stuff that I'm going to need for later uh, for filming so you guys are able to see. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm sure there's stuff I forgot, but I think I brought the majority of what we need. And uh, so I'm going to kind of put everything together here at camp. I got a few more things I got to adjust with the uh, shelter. Um, because this ground is pretty soft and so the stakes that I brought um, they're not really in the ground very solid so I think I'm gonna have to go around and maybe even find some rocks to put on top of them to make sure they don't pull out if it gets some some wind out here the reason that I picked this spot was because there's so much firewood around here and it is gonna be cold tonight and rather than you know pick another spot that has better you know ground um, I'm gonna have to be hiking further for firewood this place has a ton of dead trees over here that I can cut up and you know it's within a about 20 30 yards so it'll be easy to carry all that back and I won't have to put out as much energy because a lot of times you know I'll camp in a nice spot it's really pretty perfect setup but you gotta hike forever to go get wood um, because I don't want to be cutting live trees. Um, I'm just going to be going after the dry stuff. And we did get quite a bit of rain last night. And so everything is going to be pretty wet. Um, but I did bring some stuff that will help us get a, a fire started if we have to. So I've got a little inflatable air mattress I'm going to put in here. Um, that will bring me up off the ground. And uh, that will help keep us warm. And uh, then we'll have the fire out here in front, and that hopefully is going to reflect some of the heat back in here. There's wild animals out here that are going to snatch you up, and then there's going to be no more Marley. Yeah, and then your mom is going to kill me, and I won't be able to go home. Yeah, I'll never, I won't have a home, because she'll kill me if I come home without you. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to be warm tonight. Yeah, you get to try out your new sleeping bag. Huh. Yeah. 
One of the things that I always bring with me that's really important, definitely a tool that I use, is a folding shovel. Um, this is an old, you know, military style clone. It's made by Coleman. I've had it for quite a few years. Pretty durable. It is a bit heavy, um, but it's definitely, like I said, durable. So it's lasted me. Um, there's a lot of these on Amazon, I've noticed. And a lot of them look like total pieces of crap. They're like kind of gimmicky. You know, this is just a simple shovel. I can use it to dig a fire pit. I can use it to dig a trench around the tent. Um, and I use it, you know, for when I go to the bathroom, I can dig a hole. So we're gonna use this. I'm gonna get a fire pit here. And I don't want it too close to the tent. I'm gonna probably have it about three or four feet away. And that'll give me enough space to be able to get in and out of the tent. And it's still gonna be able to bring that heat in um, later tonight when it gets cold. So I'm gonna dig that and then we're gonna head over. We'll get some firewood. Um, I'm gonna get some lunch and then we'll head out and we'll do a little hunting and we'll explore the area. So I carved this out pretty good. I made it fairly wide so that way I can put some larger pieces of wood in and I don't have to really cut them very small. And then I just put some rocks um, on the back wall here and that's gonna hopefully help reflect some of the heat back towards the tent. And so I got this wall of dirt right here and then I left this fairly shallow and so that's gonna allow that heat to get back in here. So I kept it simple for lunch. I just brought a pan roasted uh, turkey sandwich that I picked up from the store. I'm gonna share with Marley. Um, I didn't bring a chair, but I did bring a little tarp that I'm able to sit on. And then later this evening, I'll be able to spread it out and uh, be able to keep all my cooking stuff kind of in order and clean. I'm gonna have my, my lunch here and then we're gonna head away do a little exploring and uh, see if we can find something running around here. So for this trip I brought the Daystate Red Wolf Safari. This is in 30 caliber. I uh, have reviewed this gun. It's been on countless trips with me. Um, last year I left this out overnight in the rain and snow and had no issues with it. It's a, a very accurate gun and uh, I've really enjoyed using it. We're gonna get it out, see if we can find some jackrabbits, and uh, just do a little exploring. So you guys can see we got a beautiful view up here. We do have a storm coming in and I'm hoping that it's going to kind of miss us. But if it does rain, most likely it is going to snow. Because we're sitting at right about 6,000 feet and uh, you do get snow here. But we got a beautiful view out here of this valley floor. I just wanted to come up here. We're only about maybe three quarters of a mile from camp. And so if I follow this ridge line behind me, um, that's going to take us directly back to our camp. And so I always like to come out and get up on a hill like this and just a beautiful view. Um, for me, this is kind of what it's all about. It's not really about the hunting. Um, all that's just kind of a bonus. 
but we're gonna get a little higher and uh, we'll check back. So I think we're going to head back to camp, hang out for a little bit, and then uh, i got to throw some stuff into a, a pack, and I think we'll just come back up here. Now it is getting windy, um, but all these shots that I see out here within 100 yards, um, so I think we should be pretty good. And generally the wind calms down later into the evening. That was definitely a cool hike. I, I really like it here. I can already tell I'm gonna be back here. I really like how low key it is. I like all these juniper bushes. Makes, makes a really nice place to camp. I'm sure for summertime, it would be nice to camp here because you're gonna have some shade. So I was taking my water break and I looked out behind me and we're right next to this uh, humongous juniper. Um, this is probably the largest one that I've seen personally. You can see where somebody cut this years ago. It burns really well. And like I said, we did get some rain. And so a lot of that wood that we collected it is wet. And so we're gonna need something that's fairly dry that's gonna help us get the fire started. And so underneath here, you can see where a lot of this bark is starting to peel off. And this stuff is excellent fire starter. Um, you can make a tinder bundle. So we're gonna collect a bunch of this and I'm gonna set it over there in the sun and just let it continue to dry. And this is gonna work really well to get a fire started later. Hey, cheers you guys. Definitely nice having some coffee out here on the trail. I'm really digging this campsite. Excellent fire pit. We got plenty of firewood. I really like the tarp setup. This is probably one of my favorite uh, setups for, for backpacking. Um, I really like the 10 by 15. And the reason being is you're able to have a floor. And, uh, you know, if you don't want a floor, you can configure this, you know, almost twice the size. And it's pretty versatile with the shooting stick because if we had some rain come in right now, I could really quickly just lower this about another eight inches, pull the floor back, and this would be more like an awning. And so that's really kind of the reason that I like using the tarp. You know, it's a, a very lightweight setup. Um, I do like using tents, um, but you know, you got the poles, you got a lot of extra stuff, and this thing weighs like nothing. Um, I see a lot of guys, they'll use like a 10 by 10 or a 10 by eight. And in my opinion, that's just too small. It's definitely nice having a floor, especially when you set up in a spot that, you know, you may have had rain the night before like we did. And uh, 
you know, having a floor is definitely nice. Uh, it's going to keep you you dry. Um, all your stuff isn't going to get all cruddy. You're going to stay a lot warmer. Um, that's just my experience. Um, but I'm looking forward to getting in this tonight. We'll get a fire going. I'm going to hang out, have my coffee for a little bit. Marley's taking a cat nap. And uh, we'll bring you guys back in just a little bit. It's about 3.30 right now and it does get dark fairly early and so I want to make sure that I've got enough time to get up on the hill, hang out for a little bit, see if we can find any activity with the jackrabbits and then that'll give us enough time to make it back here and get a fire going. So I've really enjoyed hiking around this area. It's kind of neat to get out here and explore. You know, as usual, there's no guarantees with the hunting, but at least we have a place that we can come back to in the warmer months. And chances are, this is a pretty good area for, for rabbits. I did see a lot of uh, rabbit droppings out there in that pasture earlier. And so I know they're here, they're just, hunkered down right now and so we're gonna head back to camp we're not too far I think if we head a little further up here we should run into it um, but yeah it's definitely getting cold I want to get a fire started So I got that juniper in here and I just balled it up and it's like a little nest and I got that in here and uh, I just wanted to mention real quick, you know I always bring a couple different ways of, of starting a fire. I've got a large ferro rod, um, I've got a smaller one that is in a tin and this has some uh, waxed uh, sawdust in it which works really well for starting fires. I got a good old Bic lighter. I got some waterproof uh, storm matches. These are made by Uko. My good friend John over at Wingman 115 turned me on to these and I, I gotta say I've used them. I think these are like the best uh, storm proof matches. Um, if you can't start a fire with these um, you're probably not going to start one. And then on top of that I got two small uh, pieces of wood and these are dry in the event that you know everything is wet and I just need something dry at least to get it started. Um, I can use my knife to shave some of this off and you know it's nice to carry that stuff. 
So I just wanted to mention that, you know, if you guys come out here, you know, especially in the colder months, make sure you have a few different ways you can get a fire started. So we're going high class tonight. We got some New York loin strip steak. I got some uh, garlic and olive oil rice. And should make a pretty good meal. And Marley's got a uh, gourmet uh, dog food, but she'll end up getting a piece of this. So I'm gonna pull this out and we're gonna cook it over the fire. I do have some heavy duty tin foil we're gonna put it in the tin foil with some some oil, and we'll put some salt and pepper on it, and uh, we'll let it cook in the on the coals. So it's right at 42 degrees right now. This fire is hot and it's pushing all that heat back into the tent, just like I hoped. I had to take my jacket off. I've got the uh, rice done, Marley ate, and I'm just waiting for the meat to finish here in the foil. And I'm keeping my fingers crossed I don't screw this up. This is the first time I've ever cooked uh, like that in foil. Um, so I'm hoping it's going to turn out good. I did bring a pan with me just in case, but uh, I'm kind of thinking that the foil is going to keep all the juices in there. and So that's at least what I'm hoping. But I think it's got a few more minutes and then we'll pull it out. It's another reason you need a shovel. That perfect, definitely worth bringing all this in. You know, I see a lot of people they use those bag uh, meals, the backpacking meals, those things suck. I'd much rather have something like this. Now, I can see if you're gonna be gone, you know, a couple nights or something like that, it's much easier to carry something that's not going to go bad but as cold as it is you know this meat really only needed to stay for a couple hours
Hey, cheers you guys. As you can see, uh, it's pretty warm. <laughs> Marley is in her new sleeping bag that she got for Christmas. And uh, it's only about 6.30 right now. It's pretty early. But it is pitch black out. I can barely see the moon coming up over the mountain here. Um, but I really had a great day today. It was fun to get out and do some hiking around and I really like this kind of camping like I said I used to do this when I was younger and it was a lot of fun but since I gotten older I just kind of I don't know what happened uh, I think I got spoiled with the Jeep and being able to kind of do it that way but you know what being able to go in on foot gets you to a places that you'd never be able to get to you know in a vehicle this was kind of a test run for the Airgun Survival Challenge. Uh, the next series we're going to be using a PCP gun, we're going to be using uh, spring guns, a gas ram, and a multi-pump. And we're going to kind of see the positives and the negatives to each. Because um, I'm curious, I kind of have my own idea on what would make a really good survival air gun. My thoughts might change after we're done with all this. Um, but no, this was fun. It's just like a test run. I'm sorry we didn't see any activity with the animals. But we're going to try again in the morning. I think we're going to head away kind of behind the tent here. I saw a field that looked kind of promising. And so I don't know. Maybe we'll see some jackrabbits over there in the morning. But we're definitely coming back here for spring. I've had a lot of fun with this. Really hope you guys have enjoyed coming along and you guys can expect to see more of this type of camping. Um, you know, probably every other week I'll have something kind of like this. So I gotta tell you guys, it doesn't get much better than this. I mean, look at this view. Got an awesome campfire. And it is warming up this tent. And uh, I think we're going to be good tonight once we're in our sleeping bags. Good morning, you guys. It got cold last night. It was about 28 degrees, and that was just when I woke up um, because the fire had gone out. And so I came out here, got a fire started. We went through all that wood last night, which really isn't surprising. And I had a hard time getting back to sleep. I didn't get back to sleep until probably about 5, 5.30. And then I woke up again at about seven and I was gonna bring you guys with us we we're gonna hike over and do a little bit of hunting and uh, all my batteries were dead in the camera all my extras the cold just sucks the life out of them and so I set everything out in the Sun I've got uh, the other batteries charging on my power bank right now and so we're just waiting on that I got a fire started, I got my coffee, it's a beautiful day, it's right around 50 degrees. We're going to head over and do a little exploring in a little bit and uh, see if we can spot any activity from animals. Then we'll come back here and we'll start packing everything up. Marley and I hiked for about two miles and we made our way on top of a couple of the ridge lines just so I could get a nice overlook of the area. 
and this particular area is extremely vast there's a lot to explore out here we will be back um, I did see a cottontail and a jackrabbit they scurried away and I wasn't able to take a shot um, but I would imagine uh, springtime is going to be pretty good up here and it's going to be really beautiful um, there's a lot of flowers and everything is usually green up here in spring um, so we will be back right now I'm just gonna bury the fire pit kind of clean up the camp pack everything away and then I'll bring you guys back with us come on more you gotta pack everything up in here come on I'm not gonna pack up your sleeping bag for you that's your job come on get it packed up let's go let's pack it up Well guys, we're all packed up and I had a fantastic trip. I really appreciate you guys coming along. It was a lot of fun doing this kind of camping. You guys can expect to see more of this type of stuff on the channel. Um, Marley and I really enjoy, you know, getting out and being able to hike and explore. And, and uh, this really is a beautiful place. Um, if you guys have any questions on any of the gear that we used, feel free to email me through my website at mountainsportairguns.com and I'll try to get back to you as quickly as I can. Really appreciate you guys watching. Really appreciate all the support and uh, I look forward to seeing you guys again.